I would love to fight Charles Oliveira because I will show you what I'm saying. He's a quitter. He doesn't want to be there when it gets nasty. The champion has a name, and it is indeed Charles Oliveira. This was poetry. Charles Oliveira been doubted his whole career, thought to be a quitter, and his opponent Justin Gaethje for months has been hammering that away. Charles Oliveira is a quitter. He quits. I can't wait till he fights me. I'm going to show everybody what I'm talking about. He's going to quit. And he does get hurt, but he never quit. He never took a back step. He went right after Gaethje, right into the fire. Gaethje says that he creates car crashes, and he's the one with the most force. Car crash happened. Oliveira puts him down and puts him in a choke only for Justin Gaethje himself to quit. He tapped out in the choke. All of the game turned on its head. Man, that's a karma kind of fight. Now, this fight was very interesting because just in case you came out there with a lot of leg kicks and two of them in the beginning landed, the next six completely missed. Oliveira showed to be the best fighter Gaethje's fought to actually defend his leg kicks. This is something I was talking about in my breakdown before this fight. Oliveira usually keeps a light lead leg, has that Muay Thai style, able to just pick up his leg and check many kicks or lift them above leg kicks, causing them to miss. Oliveira defended most of the leg kicks and he used his reach to his advantage, which is something he had to do and not be overly pressuring. He knew he had to keep good distance management and this is a good example in that first round when he showed it. Justin Gaethje went in there with a body Body jab and Oliveira just posted on him, used his reach, and connected on Gaethje with a right hand to the head that stunned him. And that was the thing about Charles Oliveira. Every time he hit Justin Gaethje with his right hand, he hurt him. Throughout the entire fight, right hands to the head caused Gaethje to wobble. There was also another moment, 3 minutes and 41 seconds of the first round, where Gaethje swings in big, and at this moment he started to get wild because he did get rattled a couple times in the fight already, and his leg kicks weren't working on Oliveira anymore. So he was winging in punches from a distance, and as we know, Gaethje's not really too great from a distance. His leg kicks do the work for him when it comes to long range, but when he doesn't have that anymore, he will leap in with punches and overextend. So by throwing a big right overhand as he tried to parry Oliveira's right hand, which is kind of opposite, he should have tried to parry Oliveira's left hand because that is the guard that's going to block Gaethje's right hook. So by parrying Oliveira's right hand, it's not really creating much of an opening. And from there, everybody knows what Gaethje does. After the right hand comes the huge left hook, and Oliveira knew it, pulls away from it using that distance management, countering Gaethje with a hard one too. Oliveira is developing a different level of power in his hands. It's crazy to think that the guy is still getting better. He's the best lightweight in the world. He's shown it tonight, and he's only getting better. Not only technically, but he's getting more powerful, he's getting smarter, and really fighting by the game plan, man, because his game plan in the fight, the way he was able to catch Justin Gaethje with that right hand, it came from the clinch. Oliveira for the entire fight was looking to tie up Gaethje and this usually happened after he would defend the light kicks or he would move forward with his hands. After throwing a punch or defending a kick, he would usually tie up with Gaethje and try to land uppercuts or knees. Now Oliveira didn't find many openings in the clinch itself, but he found an opening on Gaethje disengaging from the clinch. Whenever Gaethje got out of the clinch, he moved out flat and parallel. Notice his feet. His feet are side to side. That is no way to defend a punch and it also shows that Gaethje is defenseless in that moment. Mentally and physically, there's a lax state that Gaethje gave whenever he disengaged from the clinch and it happened multiple times. Notice I believe every time besides one or two clinches, Gaethje walked out the same way and it was always in Oliveira's range to land the right hand. And at 2 minutes and 17 seconds left of the first round, that was the time that Oliveira capitalized on it. There was many times Oliveira could have capitalized, but he shot that right hand down when he knew it was going to land, when he was confident in the moment. And Gaethje got dropped harder than he's ever been dropped in his entire career. He's known to have a really good chin. He's taken bombs by some of the biggest punchers in the world. I mean, Michael Chandler couldn't even put this guy down. Oliveira puts him down with one punch and it shows to you, it's not all about power. It's about the perfect punch that lands at the perfect time. And Oliver has some of the best timing with his hands in the entire division. Everybody's scared about his jiu-jitsu, but people have to be scared of his striking. And of course, when he got to the ground, Gaethje really didn't show any Brazilian jiu-jitsu skills as usual. He gave up his back like he always does. It's something I've mentioned many, many times before. He's a wrestler through and through. He doesn't really show jiu-jitsu at all. He gave up his back and Oliver jumped on it and choked him out instantly. But of course, Justin Gaethje had a few good moments in the fight. He dropped Oliver twice. I believe that's the most Oliveira's ever been dropped in one round before. The first one happened from an uppercut as Charles Oliveira was getting back into his stance, so he got caught off guard, but he didn't get dropped the way Gaethje got dropped. Gaethje got blasted onto his back. Oliveira looked like he sat down from the blow, rattled a bit, 
but also looked like he wanted to rest, knowing that Gage is not going to pursue him on the ground. And that's an advantage Charles Oliver has over most fighters in the UFC. If he gets hurt, he has a resting phase that he knows nobody is going to interrupt. If he ever gets hurt, he can sit to the ground, get into his guard, have like 5 seconds of rest time, knowing that the opponent is not going to do anything about it. And this happened twice actually. The next time Oliveira got dropped, it was more because he was trying to trade with Justin Gaethje. It worked before, he actually hurt Gaethje in an exchange before. They were both throwing overhands, and Oliveira hit Gaethje with his bicep, which actually hurts Gaethje, shows that Charles Oliveira is really getting his curls in there. So from that moment, it showed that Oliveira was very willing to trade with Gaethje, but he got dropped for it later. This is a clear moment of a speed difference between the two fighters. Both through the right hook, Gaethje landed first, and because he landed first, he was able to escape first, moves away from Oliveira's right hook, and you can see Oliveira was rocked, but not necessarily hurt the way Gaethje was when he got dropped. So he simply sits back down and rests again, knowing that Gaethje is not going to go to the ground with him. That's another good 5 seconds of rest after getting hit. And I want to talk about the greatest combo Oliver has ever thrown before. A flying knee into a guillotine into a pivoting right straight on the outside foot. Talk about creativity, man. So he knows that Gage, he always likes to put up a high guard and duck his head. So he tried to intercept this with a flying knee, but it gets blocked. Gage gets his defenses rattled because of the impact, and Oliver falls into an instant guillotine. No moment to waste. Gage pulls his head out of there, only for Oliveira to be a step ahead, he pivots around, gets a profile view on Geishi. Look at this angle, man. This is beautiful footwork from Charles Oliveira. And it doesn't even matter what the post that Geishi has on him. Oliveira has his sights locked down on the target and lands a right hand over the shoulder. Just amazing stuff from Charles Oliveira, and he makes short work of Justin Geishi. Geishi proved to be one of the most dangerous fights for Charles Oliveira. I mean, he dropped him twice. He hurt him. But technically speaking, Geishi was the easiest fight for Oliveira. The amount of mistakes that Gaethje made in front of Oliveira, and how many times he got countered for these mistakes, was more than any other of Oliveira's recent opponents. Dustin Poirier was technically harder for Oliveira to fight. Michael Chandler technically was harder. Out of those three elite fighters, Gaethje showed to be the easiest to hit, easiest to use his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu against, easiest to tie up with, and easiest to keep range on. Charles Oliveira is the best lightweight in the world, 100%. He's the champion. Forget the belt. I mean, the belt does give you money, and that is a bit of a shame. I mean, it wasn't really his fault that he missed weight. But this has to line up a fight between him and the winner of Islam Makashev and Benil Dariush. I think those two are going to be fighting later in the year. If they're fighting much later, I don't like it, but there is a reality that Conor McGregor jumps in there, as undeserving as that is. I mean, if Conor McGregor gets a title shot after coming off, what, how many losses in the last, like, five years, I'd rather see a Michael Chandler rematch with Oliveira before him fighting Conor. But the rightful number one contender is coming out of that Dariush and Islam fight, unless they want to just bring in Islam into the title fight. Forget about the Dariush fight, because Islam did go and fight Bobby Green, and he didn't need to do that, so... Out of every fight that's possible for Charles Oliveira, the number one fight for me is Islam Makhachev because I believe Islam is the hardest fight for Oliveira in the entire division. If he can get through that guy, I don't think anybody beats Oliveira until he just gets too damaged and he can't take a shot anymore. And as for Justin Gaethje, the perfect opponent for him is Rafa Dos Anjos. That has to be the next fight. RDA is looking amazing. He's coming off a big win. Justin Gaethje just lost. And this revolving door, this rotation with the top guys needs to be cracked open a bit. Let's give RDA a chance in the top five here. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. And if you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.